The study at Bath Spa University in 2008 asked participants to rank different regional accents in terms of intelligence. People from Birmingham were ranked with the lowest intelligence, even lower than those who stayed silent. Steve Thorne, a linguist, suggests in his research that one of the reasons why the Brummie accent is so unpopular is because of negative portrayal in the media, especially in adverts involving unemployment or exaggerated animated characters. So you lot, I challenge you to pay more interest. We want to book together. So an autoglass repair is usually free. However, many people from Birmingham have still managed to become successful despite their accent. Cat Dealey, Murray Walker, Adrian Charles, Frank Skinner, Lenny Henry, Julie Walters and Ozzy Osbourne are all from the Birmingham area. So where did this negative reputation come from? 46% of people we asked described Birmingham as industrial and 11% described it as smoky. Birmingham's industrial reputation is rooted in its past. From the 16th century onwards, Birmingham became a centre of many metalworking industries due to its location near to iron ore and coal. By the 18th century, Birmingham had grown rapidly into one of the world's first major industrial towns, exporting goods to Europe and establishing a reputation for quality goods and low prices. The building of Birmingham's world-famous canals from 1769 onwards the Industrial Revolution centred on the Midlands. The turn of the century seeing the transport of goods in and out of town, reaching over a hundred boats of cargo a day. One of the most important canals connected Birmingham to coal mines of the Black Country, a name derived from the large amount of air pollution that the steel and coal works produced. However, in the past 50 years, Birmingham has undergone development through the Birmingham Redevelopment Scheme in order to modernise Birmingham's image. The most recent development is the Cube, which shares the same designer as the Gherkin in London. Most of Birmingham's skyline now consists of new buildings, with its most famous being the Bullring, which was reopened in 2003 after a £500 million refurbishment. The Bullring used to consist of markets and originally opened in the Middle Ages. After many years of change, it was officially made into a mixture of open air markets and an indoor shopping centre in 1964. It's much better than it was when I first started coming here 25 years ago. So how have you seen it change? Uh, the bull ring removal, the Harvey Nichols and a number of new fine restaurants have transformed Birmingham over the last 10 years. For the better? Greatly. So well, it's it's more better. service industry now, you know, all the heavy industry and stuff that, you know, like, you know, that Brum's been renowned for, like the Black Country and over it's, that's all gone. So. Yeah, we've just got to move, move with the times, I suppose. I think it's an excellent city. I think the, build, the building uh, development in Walsall over the years, in Birmingham over the years, has been absolutely first rate. I very much was in favour of the City Council spending its money in earlier years to transform the whole of the centre of Birmingham into the, the marvellous place. I think it's a marvellous place that it is now. Uh, well, historically, it's been the the West Midlands has been the centre of business and industry, uh, but that's greatly changed. It's much more a financial centre than it was um, 10, 20 years ago. Some residents feel that the commercialisation of the city centre has lost the sense of community and tradition that Birmingham once had. It was proper, like, it's all changed now, isn't it? Like, basically, the architect, architects has come out there, right, design this, design that, and it's just a nightmare up there. Like, just Everything looks out of, place, out of proportion. I'll tell you something now, right? The, the old, the old boring was 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 how it should have been. Obviously, they've rearranged it and they've changed it, and it's now, it's now, it's 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 a, the new boring, and and I think a lot of people will know that they would have preferred it how it was, yeah. you know. Why is that? Because we because knew it every, original, every, wasn't because it? it was original, for one, and for two. Everyone knew where everything was, and 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 and, and we got right. to know uh, around around the markets, around the stores, around everywhere in town. Uh, people knew, everyone knew everyone basically. There was framers for the boring, weren't they? You know what I mean? Like you got your fruit and veg, like proper market people there. Like it's all changed now. They've gone like shipped them off down the other side. Basically, how I can see. The market people who've been trading for years, 30 years plus, that's in a way they're actually trading now next to the rag markets. 
they'd sooner do away with that and have a car park. And like, you know what I mean? When I'm saying that, so you can shop in Marks and Spencers and that and get fresh food. You don't need the market. So they're taking the tradition out there. One of the people who's witnessed Birmingham's redevelopment is Bullring Markets trader Carl Spiegel, who's been selling fruit and vegetables there for the past 25 years. Everything evolves. People evolve, lifestyle evolve, you get um, new people coming from a new influx from a different country. If, the way the market's evolved has, has been dramatic over many years. When I first came here, everybody in the whole world shopped in markets because they didn't have supermarkets in those days. I mean, the, the biggest supermarkets are a small little shop selling everything. It's a very long story. My Originally from Israel, Carl's father was stationed in Birmingham uh, during the war and brought his family uh, with him. Carl has since travelled the world and uh, claims that Birmingham will always be his home. Jewish homes here. Well, no, not, not necessarily. We, well, it's never been easy. It's very long hours, 10 to 15 hours a day, every day. Hard work is an achievement. Uh, but Birmingham changed wonderfully. Uh, Birmingham City Centre, if you go into the Birmingham Centre along the canals, along the whole walk of Broad Street, New Street, High Street, and all in the, when they're in the perimeter of those, that landscape, it's wonderful. We have a, a very advanced city now. It's exciting, it's for the young people, so exciting, all the nightclubs, um, the lifestyle of them is absolutely dramatically changed. For the better, much for the better, yeah. It's growing all the time. And what has changed recently is the, uh, the financial, global, national, local situation in the money markets. It's brought back a hell of a lot of people to realise what a wonderful place markets are. As they are, they're really exciting places. Good evening and welcome to Midlands Today from the BBC. Tonight they found two submachine guns just behind the building where there's, there's drug use and again antisocial behaviour. A man has been stabbed during trouble at the Fasaki celebrations at Hansworth Park in Birmingham. The cost of graffiti is spiralling. Last year, Birmingham City Council spent more than half a million pounds cleaning up the mess. I feel safe in my neighbourhood, but like, you know, I think there's still things that still need to be done. Crime levels have fallen in Birmingham, but because of heavy media coverage over rare events, it can seem like a dangerous place. Between 2004 and 2008, there was a 27% decrease in crime in Birmingham. And of the major eight cities in the country, apart from London, Birmingham has the lowest crime rate. This is partly thanks to the Crime and Disorder Partnership, which has been established in the city which is the largest of its kind in the country. Obviously, yeah, there is a bit of uh, gun crime going on and knife crime, um, a bit of violence, there's, 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 but you get that everywhere, to be honest. You get that all over, the, all, all over um, England and, and, and all over the world, basically. It's getting better because the police force has gotten much better and the community itself, I mean, the government's not doing particularly a lot towards it, but in Birmingham as a whole, everything just seems to be getting better, the crime rates are going down because they're actually thinking more about things. It's a city at the end of the day, there's always going to be crime. There just always will be, but it's part and parcel living in a big crowded city. The area that I used to live in has really been cleaned up since the time I lived there, so in the past three years, hands with. So in the past three so there's years, rough areas and then there's all right areas, so yeah. it's all right, yeah. We are getting a grip with it and we do realise that, that something has to be done about it. Like quite a few towns, you know, the kind of day life is completely different to night life. So, yeah. you know, if you come here for like a night out, you have to kind of be prepared and, you know. People don't want the city to be known as the gangster city and I don't think it really is. Yeah, it happens, but it's not, it's not as major as people make out. <laughs>